Welcome back. We're going to look at COVID in Europe and how different nations can see things very differently. Denmark and Italy sit on the opposite ends of the continent. Now finding themselves dealing with the pandemic in completely opposite ways. Denmark is opening up, essentially removing all COVID restrictions, while Italy is making it even harder for the unvaccinated to participate in society. Well, let's start in Denmark, where they've lifted all COVID restrictions. CNN's Scott McLean went to Copenhagen to find out. Loud music, stiff drinks, and close talking. In Denmark, they're partying like it's 2019. After two years of on-again, off-again restrictions, mask mandates, and lockdowns, Denmark has officially kissed COVID restrictions goodbye. I am over it. Like, I think everybody is. I'm excited. You know, we've been waiting for this moment for so long. In reality, the pandemic hasn't gone away. In fact, new average daily infections in Denmark are more than 12 times higher than the country's previous peak and rising. Is now really the best time to do away with the rules? Sure. And of course, everybody's asking us that question. But when we're looking at our hospital admission rates day by day and we see fewer and fewer cases and we see very few cases in the elderly, that are vaccinated, actually admitted to hospital or even dying. And that's just because of vaccination? I have no other good explanation why Denmark is in such a unique place. Denmark has one of the highest vaccination rates on earth. Late last year, they lifted most restrictions only to once again batten down the hatches in December, closing schools, mandating masks indoors, and putting curfews on bars and restaurants. Now, virtually all of those restrictions are gone. Is it really the end this time? Well, we hope so, but we promised uh, the citizens of Denmark that we will only have restrictions if they are truly necessary and we'll lift them as soon as we can. It's not just Denmark. Last week, England lifted nearly all of its domestic restrictions as lawmakers set out a novel new strategy. We must learn to live with COVID in the same way that we've learned to live with flu. Before the vaccine, COVID was a lot more deadly than the flu. But as immunity rose and a less severe variant emerged, deaths directly caused by influenza or pneumonia are now not far off of COVID. And lately, they're contributing factors far more often. Is it reasonable to treat COVID like we treat the flu? I think it's not a bad model, unless, of course, the virus surprises us and comes up with a nasty, highly infectious variant. Back in Denmark, people are free to circulate. So is the virus. But two years, three vaccine doses, and a lot of sacrifice later, COVID doesn't seem so scary anymore. Scott McLean, CNN, Copenhagen. Well, meanwhile, at the same time, parts of Europe are opening up. We have countries like Italy that are going through, going a different direction, really. Italy updating their Green Pass rules today, making it even more difficult for those who have not gotten a vaccine to get into public places. And there's even a new $100 euro fine for anyone over 50 who refuses to get a vaccine. Well, CNN's Ben Wiedemann is in Rome and joins us now. Good to see you, Ben. So if you're over 50, you refuse the vaccine, uh, you can now expect to cop a fine. Just explain how this will be enforced. Well, it's not just a fine if you're over 50 and unvaccinated. The only places really you can go are supermarkets, pharmacies, gas stations. And uh, the way the Italian medical system works, the health system, uh, they know very, they can find out very easily if you have not been vaccinated. If you haven't been vaccinated, the Italian National Health Service will inform the Italian version of the Internal Revenue Service that you have not been vaccinated and the Revenue Service will inform you that you must pay this 100 euro fine. It's a one-off thing, but it certainly uh, shows that the Italian authorities are increasingly impatient with those who are resisting getting vaccinated. Yeah, <laughs> life. Uh... Uh, it's not much really you can do, can you, if you can only go to a supermarket uh, or a pharmacy or a gas station and you've got this fine. So just explain for us where cases are at right now, Ben, because I understand last month uh, cases were topping 200,000 a day in Italy. Uh, has it passed the peak? 
Yes, it's believed it has passed the peak. Uh, today, for instance, uh, the latest number we've gotten for new cases is 133,142. That's still a pretty high number, even compared uh, to the early days of the pandemic when we were shocked when there were 6,000 new cases a day. But oh, the, the virus has changed. Uh, it is far less deadly because, according to the latest numbers, 90% of the population here has received at least one dose. 78% have received the booster. Uh, and therefore, the numbers aren't as bad. But actually, if you look at the number of dead today being reported by the authorities, it is 427. That's a not insignificant number of people dying from a disease in one day. Yeah, exactly. Linda. All right, Ben Wiedemann, uh, good to have you. Thanks for that update from, from Rome. Well, Pfizer is expected to seek authorization in the U.S. as soon as today for its COVID-19 vaccine for children aged six months to five years old. A source says the company will ask the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to grant emergency authorization for a two-dose regime. And if granted, this would be the first COVID-19 vaccine available for the youngest children in the United States. Well, I want to bring in our senior medical correspondent, Elizabeth Cohen. Good to see you, Elizabeth. So tell us more about uh, what we know about these doses that they'll be having for young children. So, Linda, what we know is that last month Pfizer said that when they tried doses out on children ages two to five, they weren't getting the immune response that they wanted to get. And so they were sort of rethinking how to approach this. Now we're hearing that they could apply as soon as today to the FDA for emergency use authorization. So the question is, OK, well, are you using the dosage that you tried out and it didn't work so well or a different dosage? And if so, how could you have fully tested that, given that it was just a month ago that you said you were sort of taking another look? It's all very unclear. So it'll be very interesting to see what dosage they will come up with. The last time that they sort of talked about this, you know, children ages six months to five were getting one dose. Children ages five to 11 were getting another dose and 12 and up, you know, adolescents and adults were getting a third dose. So we'll just have to see what Pfizer comes out with. Linda? Yeah, we will uh, talk with you again soon, no doubt, as we get some more details. Elizabeth Cohen for mm -hmm. us. Thanks very much.